How many teams in the country are really better than the Arizona Wildcats football team? There's probably not as many as you would think. All that and more. Let's get started here on Locked On Wildcats. You are Locked On Wildcats. Your daily podcast on the Arizona Wildcats. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Thanks for keeping it locked on Wildcats and making this your first listen of the day. I am your host, Mike Luke. All right, we've got a lot to get to this show. But first, Arizona beat the absolute snot out of Utah. There's not many times that you can say that about a Utah Utes team that, let's be honest here, is very good. And it's one of the best programs in the country. It's probably been the best program in the uh, Pac-12 for the last, what, five, six years? Something like that. And how do they... uh, and how do they beat you? The big part of the big part of they beat you is they don't turn the ball over, they don't do dumb things, and more so than anything, they are again, they are uh, going to always be a tough out. And when you're a t- and by a tough out, I mean a team that will almost always be uh if you're going to win, you're going to beat them 24-21. You're going to beat them something like that. That is not the uh, that is not what happened uh <laughs> this pat this is not what happened against Arizona. Arizona honestly just beat the living heck out of them and it was uh it was really that simple. Arizona football now is in a stage and it feels weird saying this. Um Arizona feels uh, like we're at the stage now where they can pretty much man up with about any team. We're going to talk about which teams, you know, could possibly give them problems. Obviously, I'm uh uh, I'm obviously not going to uh, sit here and say that Arizona is going to be able to beat Georgia. Maybe they will. I don't know. But you know what? I'm also not. Um, I'm also not. Uh, I'm also not going to sit here and uh, say that they couldn't beat Georgia. I'll just put it to you like that. But how did this happen? First and foremost, Arizona beat the heck out of Utah on the defensive side of the football. Uh, Arizona was able to essentially just line up and push Utah around. Um, you look at the, uh, you look at the defensive uh, stat line right here. You look at, uh, Taylor Upshaw. Um, he is a, uh, Taylor Upshaw. Absolutely fantastic. A sack, two tackles for loss. Um, you got the, uh, uh, you got the, uh, the rest of the team too. Six tackles for losses at whole. And honestly, Utah didn't even, uh, Utah didn't even look like they knew what they were going to be doing. Like they knew, they didn't even look like they knew what they were doing against Arizona because I think they were kind of shell shocked. I don't think that they played a team like that all year that could kind of just push them around in the manner in which they did. And then Jacob Manu again. Jacob Manu has been an absolute monster for Arizona, and not only has he been an absolute monster, he's been that dude who is essentially able to call out the defense or call the defense, but he's also a run stuffer. Brad Alice made a very good point when he said that, you know, um, I am curious what, uh, um, what he can actually do as far as maybe making tackles uh, closer to the line of scrimmage. And, you know, honestly, I think that was a, uh, I think that's a fair point to make. You know what? He's answered all of those questions. Not only has he answered all those questions, he is, again, he's become a stalwart of the team. He is the leader of that defense. Um, and honestly, this is also a squad that, uh, doesn't really have any weaknesses. And I think that's what really tells you there's not a team that Arizona plays, uh, that Arizona doesn't match up well with. And I think that is a huge part of what we're talking about here is that Arizona has Arizona as a whole matches up very well with every single team that they're going to play again. Maybe you don't beat Georgia. I get that, but Eh, you know what? I'll take our I'll take our chances with that one. I think that um, I think that this is a, a stage where um, I think this is a stage two where Arizona is on a is on the verge of Arizona's on the verge. I think of being able to um, be a uh, be a top ten team preseason next year. That's where I think it's really um, that's where I think it's really impressive. Um, not only is it really impressive, I think that uh, I think we're also kind of at the stage too, where Jed Fish, 
you got to be the national coach of the year, my guy. Um, you got to be, and honestly, I don't even know that it's close. This is a top 10 team that he's put out there. And this is a team that had an over or under of four and a half wins. Again, you should have got in on FanDuel if you would listen to what we had said. And uh, you would be in, you would be much richer at this point because FanDuel is uh, there to help people like ourselves, you know, try to get some money. But again, Vegas still a little bit behind Arizona. And um, I still like Arizona. I, I think Arizona crushes ASU this week. I would take uh, Arizona with the po- or Arizona to cover the nine and a half on the FanDuel Sportsbook app. But again, this was just a massive win for Arizona. And honestly, Noah Fafita is. We've talked about him. We're going to keep talking about him. Noah Fafita is the dude that makes this one makes this all of this happen. Um, again, he is not a he is not a dude who is. Um, going to, you know, throw 95 yards down the field and make the plays like that. That's not what he does. But guess what he does? He just 1,000%, he dissects a defense. And not only does he dissect a defense, he's able to get you where um, the plays just come easy. Um, Plays just come easy for him. And not only do plays just come easy for him, he just, you know, people keep saying, you know what, we're going to stop the line of scrimmage. We're going to stop this. Um, and it just doesn't happen. You don't know what to do. And not only do you not know what to do, you don't really know what he's going to do because again, he not only is, I he not only is at the stage, I think where, um, he's got a great re- rapport with T-Mac. We already know all about that, but also the other dudes on the roster, um, they just kind of get open. Malachi Riley all of a sudden is getting open. And not only is Malachi Riley uh, getting open, he's also um, another player that I think you just kind of look at and say, yeah, uh, they just kind of get it. That's where Arizona is at this stage, for, uh, friends. Not only is Arizona a problem um, for uh, any team that they're going to play, they're a top 10 team. And what does that exactly mean? We're going to discuss that next. Thanks for making Locked On Wildcats your first listen of the day. I am your host, Mike Luke. Um, Not only is this a a team that could compete for the Pac-12 championship. Now, again, Arizona needs to uh, beat ASU, obviously, and you need Oregon State to beat Oregon. But neither one of those, especially Oregon State being Oregon, are uh, that outlandish, to be honest with you. And not only are they not that outlandish, um. I kind of think, well, first of all, Arizona's going to destroy ASU, but I would assume anyways. But um, I also think that, uh, I also think that Oregon State's got a real chance against Oregon. Again, we're going to break that one down as the week unfolds, my friends. But how many teams in the country right now are clearly better than Arizona? Um, uh, I would say that, uh, I would say that Arizona is, um, I would say that, uh, Georgia's better. Then after that, Alabama, cool, Michigan, Ohio State. And then after that, you start really scratching your head. Uh, You start really scratching your head a little bit. Um, I don't really know who is actually better than those squads at this point. I don't know. Um, Maybe, uh, you know, maybe Florida State if they have their quarterback. But after that, I think that Arizona is pretty much in good spot. And not only are they pretty much in a good spot, I don't, again, I don't see any team that they don't match up well with. I think Arizona right now is one of the top 10 teams in the country. And that is what's wild to think about where we are at this point. But again, everything kind of came to the uh, fruition once Noah Fafita took over as quarterback. Um, And again, that's a, that's a big testament to the kid. That's a big testament to, uh, Jed Fish for what he was able to do, bringing him in, because a lot of people weren't sure about Noah Fafita. I know he's only 5'8", whatever the case may be, but how many times do you really see the ball, uh, how many times do you really see the uh, the ball batted down at the line of scrimmage? How many times do you see players who are like, man, he just, he can't make that. There aren't really those kind of plays. And, um, and he plays well against all of the good teams. Every good team, or every good team that he's played against, whether it's Utah, whether it's Washington, whether it's USC, whether it's Oregon State. No, Fafita plays good ball against. Um, He raises his competition. He raises his level of competition. And I think that's something that's unique. 
not only is it something unique, I think that it's something that we shouldn't take for granted because, quite frankly, um, he now makes it look easy. And this really isn't easy what he's doing. Not only is it not easy what he's doing, it is something that, uh, you know, I think is kind of unpre uh, unprecedented, to be honest with you. Um, this is a squad that is uh, – this is a squad that, again, is just kind of next level. They are good, and um, here's what we need. I think Arizona – if Arizona plays in the Pac-12 title game against Washington, I think they have every opportunity to be able to beat uh, beat Washington. Um, because Arizona outplayed Washington in the second half. That was Noah Fafita's first start. Not only was that Noah Fafita's first start, that was also that was also uh, a team that you know you got off to a really slow start. But not only did you get off to a really slow start, you got uh, you got. Um, a team that, uh, you know, you got a team in uh, Arizona that was just really, you know, that was just really kind of kind of new to everything. Not only were they kind of new to everything, it was just kind of a uh, it was just kind of a situation where I think that uh, you didn't want to be really overwhelmed by anything. And I think that's where uh, um, that's kind of where it's at. Honestly, though, I'm just kind of at a loss for words for what we're watching. This is a team that um, – this is a team that is just – honestly, I think this is the best team since 1998 here at Arizona. In 1998, that was a bad group of dudes right there. That was a team that finished top five in the country, um, 19 NFL players. Uh, in my opinion, the best players in school history – or the best team in school history, and I don't even know that it's close – I know that a lot of people would go with the Swarm in 94, but it's those two teams. It's nobody else. And that's just what is so unique about this. I do think that uh, we are at the stage now where uh, Arizona, um, it's there's going to be a tough job for Jed Fish to leave. Listen, Jed Fish is going to have options. Jed Fish is going to have a lot of different uh, places that he could go to. But right now, if you're Jed Fish, do you really want to bounce from Arizona? Because you're also looking at a national title contender right now. Um, and not only that, um, not only that, I also think that, uh, I also think that, uh, it's also fair to say that, um, you know, going into 2024, it's going to be a top 10 team. Not only is it going to be a top 10 team. I, uh, I think that, uh, you know, when you look at the big 12, I also think that it's fair to say that Arizona is going to have a very good chance to be able to compete very favorably in the big 12. And that is not a diss at all towards our big 12 fans. Friends, I love the big 12. And uh, very excited to be joining the Big 12, but this is a this is a loaded roster right now, and this was really kind of the encapsulation game for me, where I think it's fair to say that Arizona is legit. Arizona can beat you up, and not only can Arizona beat you up, when they're done with you, they're going to let you know about it as well because they're big, they're physical. There's no spot on the defense where it's like ah, you know, uh, you can really kind of beat them up or whatever the case may be. Again, this was a statement. Big to pure and simple, this was an absolute statement. Um, and it's also a huge tip of the cap to what Jed Fish has been able to do here because he said when he came in, we are going to uh, we're gonna do this right. Nobody will out recruit us. And what I mean by that is when nobody will out recruit us is that um we might not get everybody, but we are going to make players say no to us until the very end, and he's done exactly that. Um, again, he's been a man of his word. And not only has he been a man of his word, he's also been the uh, the dude who is. Uh, I think it's fair to say at this stage. Um, I think it's fair to say at this stage. I think he should be the national coach of the year. Not only do I think he should be the national coach of the year, I think that he should be the guy that uh, um, is going to get a massive raise. And not only should he get a massive raise, um, I think it's also fair to say that at this stage that uh, um, he could possibly he's got the potential to be the Lute Olson of Arizona football. He's got that type of potential and he's somebody that I think this community just rallies around this community. 1000% loves and adores, and he's given them every reason to. So I think at this stage in the game, we are, uh, we just got to tip our cap to Jed fish. We also got to tip our cap to uh, Dave Hickey and president Robbins for making this one happen because I certainly didn't see this. And I don't know many people have thought this was going to work out the way it did. All right. On that note, we will be back with you tomorrow. Post game show, obviously, as always, thanks for keeping it locked on Wildcats and making this your first listen of the day. We'll be back with you tomorrow.